you're looking to make your first $1,000 from Forex trading, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Before we actually start the video, I just wanna say in Forex and in trading in general, you need money to make money. So if you're coming into this video with 10 pounds in your account or even 50 pounds in your account, you're not going to likely be able to make a thousand pounds from this. So you're going to want to firstly make some more money so that you actually have stuff to invest into trading so that you can actually make your first $1,000 profit as a result of this. Money makes money. So if you don't have money, you can't make money in trading. And if you want to know how myself and countless other prop firm traders are actually making you know, multiple five figures, even six figure payouts from these prop firms, stay to the end of the video for the last tip, which is a little secret tip for you guys. So moving on to step one, and this is to develop your edge in the markets. I do think this is the most important step. And that's why we are starting with number one, developing your edge and it's the first thing you should actually focus on when you're actually looking to make your first profit in the markets you know it's all good sitting down at the charts and looking okay does it look like it's going to buy does it look like it's going to sell but that's completely irrelevant because in the long run and in the long term of your trading career you're going to want to have an edge that you can consistently deploy into the markets by copy and pasting the setup that you're usually taking over and over and over again if you have a setup that you can't easily repeat it isn't really a good setup if you are confused is the setup there? Is it not there? You don't have a good setup. And these are kind of a few little tests that you can actually have when you look at the chart. How easy is it to actually spot the setup? If you're having to sift through 10 different time frames, five different pairs to even see if a trade is valid or even to find a trade, I don't think the trade setup or the strategy you're actually trading is a very good one. I feel like if you're going onto the charts within you know a short period of time, you should be able to see is there going to be a valid setup for me? Is there even going to be a chance that I see a setup? And by doing this, it can obviously eliminate spending useless time on the charts, which would eventually lead to over trading and forcing yourself to enter trades, which you wouldn't normally take. If you don't have an edge, there are many ways to actually develop one. And I feel like the main one, which people talk about, and the, the obvious one is to actually backtest, kind of build an understanding of the setup before you bring it onto the live markets. With this backtesting, the best way to actually do it is to test, I'd say two to three years of data, especially if you are a day trader, you need to have experience trading with multiple different market uh, cycles and market environments. Can you trade through solid trending markets? How do you trade during consolidation periods? These are all things which you actually need to know. And the main reason for this is you need to know when to actually start risking your money and when to just sit out, sit on your hands and just let the market do its thing instead of risking the hard earned money which you've actually earned in the first place. After you actually have an understanding of your strategy from your backtesting, this is when you can actually take the next step on to forward testing. Forward testing is very, very simple. Let's say you're looking at the chart and you think price is going to do this in the future. You put your risk to reward tool on like you would take a trade normally and then you see how it plays out. And the main benefit of this is you're seeing price as it is actively moving. So you can react as if you're actually in the trade. Whereas back testing, obviously each candle flicks through one after the other. You're not seeing how that candle is reacting to certain areas or how that candle is actually closing at the time at the time of day you'd normally be trading. Actually being able to see the setup live and also how you'd manage it if you're actually trading that account. So moving on to step number two, and this is to trade a small personal account. A lot of people online tell you that you need to trade with either a demo account or just don't trade until you have a good strategy. I feel like trading with a live account from the start is very, very good. There will be a chance that you actually lose money on this account. But if you use proper risk management, probably won't lose this account. You're going to get to the point where your back testing is going really well and you want to forward test. You want to start testing it on a live account. There's obviously going to be a difference between your back testing and your live results just based on your psychology. So if you're actually trading live from the very start, whether it is a, an account of £100 or £200, this is completely fine because just to get used to trading with live money, money that you've had to spend hours working to actually earn, it's gonna put more pressure on the trades you're actually taking. You're going to want to find a good setup because if you don't and the trade loses, then you're losing money as a result. So you're more inclined to actually spend time developing the strategy so you can implement it on your live trading. And the main reason why you want to start small is you don't want to just throw yourself in the deep end with trading. Like I see a lot of people with prop firms they, they'll be trading a £1,000 personal account and they'll go straight in with a 200, 300, even 400K funded account. You're going from seeing £10, £20 wins to now seeing four, eight, ten, twenty thousand pound wins. It's a very, very big jump. A lot of people can't actually deal with seeing either high drawdown or high profits amounts on their phone. 
you know, seeing 30K profit is gonna definitely affect them differently to how it would if they're only seeing 30 pounds profit on their phone screen. So by gradually just increasing the account size, it does eliminate any of this from happening because as it's slowly growing the account from the profits you're actually making, or if you are consistently depositing, then it will be a slow and gradual process. So you have time to actually acclimatize yourself to the new account size. After you've actually made profit on this account and it is scaled up, this is when you're going to want to purchase a funded challenge. But a lot of people will say, oh, just put any money you have into a funded challenge. But I view this very differently. I think that you should only purchase a funded challenge with the profits you've actually made from your personal account. So if you haven't made profits from your live account, then don't buy a prop firm account. Let's say you're trading with a 500 pound account and you've made hundred pounds profit. Great, you can buy a 10K funded account or a funded challenge even. Then you can trade this 10K account. Okay, the profits, you're gonna obviously put them back into the personal account. You can use the profits from that 10K account after maybe a couple of payouts to then purchase a 50K account or a 25K account. And then slowly build this up as you're making more profits on your funded account. But I feel like with funded accounts, is the best way to actually make your first $1,000. You can trade uh, an account of $1,000 personally, but obviously we're looking to make profit of $1,000. So you trade your $1,000, you make 10%, you've made $100, you purchase a funded account, and then boom, you're immediately at 10,000. You can make profit on that. If you make 10%, that's $1,000. So you've made your 1,000, then you can continue scaling after that. Moving on now to step number four. This is to use the funded and any other income that you actually have to grow that personal account. So I see it's very frowned upon in your in this trading industry to have a job or to even have a part-time job. I feel like a lot of people that try to become a full-time trader would actually perform a lot better if they actually had income outside of trading to fund their trading life. It's as simple as that. They see it as a bad thing because they're trying to escape the nine to five or they're trying to escape employment but they have no income. So if they're not a profitable trader, making consistent money with a large account, you know, like we said in the start of the video, money makes money. So if they don't have a large account already, they're not gonna make enough to live. Having income sources that cover all of your expenses is key. You need to make enough money to cover your expenses, to cover your bills, to cover your food. So at least you have a roof over your head and you have food ready to eat. Then you can spend the rest of the money investing into uh, your maybe your trading education or into growing your personal account or buying funded account challenges to try and increase the amount of capital you actually have to trade with that isn't eating up into the money that is used for all your expenses just to live day to day. If you're using funded accounts on a trade copier, maybe linked to your personal account, it means that if you make money on your personal, you make money on the funded. Best thing about this is where we're funded, obviously you only keep 90%. And then you can use that profit to put back into your personal account to continue growing that. If you lose 5% in a day, the funded account is gone. If you lose 5% in a day on a personal account, it doesn't matter. You can obviously recoup all that, that money you've actually lost, continue trading because you don't have any drawdown rules on a personal account. So make sure you have both. And I feel like a personal account should be your number one priority because 100% of that is your own money. And moving on to step number five, and this is to use your profits to increase your profits. This is how I've actually received quite large payouts from prop firms. And this is how I've actually passed a lot of prop firm challenges. So let's say in the account, it's a 100K account and the account is now at 105K. So I've made some profit, I've made 5%. So how am I going to make more profit? Well, usually when you've actually just passed a, a prop firm, you're at 100K, that's the flat balance. Now we're at 105K, we can use that 5K as a buffer. So we never want to go below the original balance, but now we can start risking the profits to eventually make more profits as a return. Instead of risking the 1% that you'd normally risk or the 0.5% on a funded account, I'd now risk two, two and a half percent because obviously I'm just risking my profits. Then hopefully make more profit because obviously the wins will be uh, two and a half times bigger. The Obviously the losses are gonna be bigger too, but you're only risking your profits. You're not risking any of your overall drawdown on the account, you know, let's say, you leave it so that if you go down to 101K, you then stop and go back to your normal risk or then just wait for the payout. But only do this if you obviously have a lot of money outside of trading, you have other trading income. If it was my only funded account, I wouldn't go and start risking loads because obviously you have no lifeline. If you accidentally risk too much, you break the daily drawdown or you have slippage, 
we're trading with a tight stop loss any of these things can happen so definitely make sure you have uh, a safety net if you are actually risking more on your trading accounts you know no one wants to be in a situation where you blow the only account you have and then you're literally left with no accounts so it's not the situation you want to be in so make sure you are trading responsibly if you are going to start risking more on your account but that is how i actually grow the payouts and how i've had payouts of you know 15k 20k and even 50k days from my actual trading so if you're actually wanting to learn how to develop your edge then be sure to check out the course in the description and hopefully i'll see you in there to learn exactly how i've had these these huge payouts and how i made my first a thousand dollars from forex trading